Hello, I'm Steve Maskery and welcome to a very sombre Workshop Essentials. This has got to be the saddest, but also the most privileged commission that I've ever had. A month ago, my best friend Stuart was right as rain, as far as we all knew. He was helping me with the, the electrics on my trailer on the Thursday. He got sick on the Saturday. He scanned on the Monday, and by Thursday, he'd got a palliative care package in place. And that was less than a month ago. And he died the day before yesterday. And he asked me if I would make his coffin. I've never made a coffin before. And in fact, I've learnt rather more about the <laughs> funeral industry than I, than I care to, uh, uh, than I would wish to do. This is not a coffin for a start. This is a casket. A coffin's got the curved sides at the shoulders. Uh, if it's got straight sides, it's a, it's a casket. And you can't build it out of any old wood either. He said, I said, what do you want it making up, Stuart? And he said, uh, oh, any old... Rubbish. Old pallets. It's only going to get burned. Well, it turns out that you can't make it out of anything you like. It's, uh, there are rules and regs to do with emissions. So anything that's treated is verboten. Uh, and all the wood has got to be FSC certificated. And coffee manufacturers who are FSC accredited will have their own registration number, which they stamp on the bottom. And the, at, the crem, at the crematorium, they will look for that number. Now, I haven't got an FSC certification. Um, so the first thing I had to do was liaise with my local crematorium superintendent, or at least the office, the superintendent isn't in post at the moment. But the lady there was really helpful. She told me what I could and couldn't do. And, um, and I've all got it in writing about what I'm planning to do. Any finish has got to be water-based or wax, natural wax. You can't use uh, an organic, uh, like a two-part lacquer or anything like that. It has to be water-based. This is just going to be finished in beeswax, which is okay. Um, a coffin has to be lined on the inside to make it watertight. Um, and I've been told different things by different people, actually. Um, I went to a coffin manufacturer, which is just around the corner. I could walk there. And they told me that these days, because of COVID, um, all bodies are bagged. Uh, whereas, and I went to, I went there, then went to a, an undertaker to see if I, could, if I could see what one of these bags looked like, just so that I knew what I was dealing with. And they said that they don't bag them unless it's COVID. So I've been told different things by different people. Um, so the only people that can give me a definitive answer will be the undertakers um, that Stuart's family will... Uh, commission to do it but this is what I've come up with um, it's all Scandinavian redwood there's not a knot in it not visibly there are knots in it but they're all on surfaces that you don't see on the inside and the underside of the bottom and the underside of the top here but the rest of it is as clean as a whistle and um, natural rope handles uh, obviously there's holes through here so the lining is going to have to um, be put in afterwards. I, I don't think I've got to do the lining. I think the undertakers will do it. But if they expect it to be delivered lined, then I, I, can, I can do that. So there's about two cubic feet of timber here, uh, lumber if you're in America. Uh, so there was quite a lot of planing up to do. I chose the best boards for the top. I've arranged my boards how I want them. There's a knot there and there, but that'll get lost in the, in the taper. So we put a triangle mark on there and they're all the way at the top. And then just mark some biscuit positions. I don't really need biscuits for strength but it helps enormously with alignment. So we'll 
have one row of biscuits there, 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 and there. I need to cut a, a rebate all the way around my base to leave a tongue. Uh, so I'm using a, a rebate cutter in my router, rabbit if you prefer, um, in, my, in my router. And I've got this stabilizer on it. This is really handy actually. It just clamps to the fence rods. The underside there has got a bit of um, plastic on it to make it nice and slick. And it's exactly in line with the base of my router and this is really helpful because this is heavy and is very easy to tip when you're on the edge of a board it, it's very easy for it to tip now this allows me to press down I can hold it there when I'm right back here and starting off I can hold it there and by the time I get to the end I can hold it there and uh, that gives me a lot more stability while I'm routing really excellent that's this so I'll get uh, cabled up and give it a whirl. I built this fence a couple of years ago and although I don't use it very often, when I do need to use it, it does the job fantastically. It's really, really good. And its particular features are these two feather boards. They don't just hold the wood down hard on the, on the table, they keep it snug in against the fence as well. Because all these fingers are cut at a very slight angle. I don't know what exactly, I can't remember, but say five degrees. So as, they, uh, as the fingers get pushed they press down and in at the same time and it's also got an adjustable guard so this covers the area where all the action's taking place i've got a zero th clearance throat plate for my dado stack and i'm going to cut a groove all the way along this bottom edge here have i got it the right way around yes i have so let's get togged up See if we can do a close-up at the same time. Okay. And that is the cleanest groove you ever did see. And the, this was complicated by the fact that these corners are not square. They're four degrees off square. So these, are, um, these corners are four degrees less than 90, and the ones at the bottom are four degrees greater than 90. And that adds quite a lot of complexity to the joinery. So this is my setup for these angled uh, rebates, rabbits. I've got my blade canted to the angle of the tape. I've got my fence on the left, which means I can't use my overhead guard. So this is an occasion to use my magnetic one. Like that, good. And, so, uh, and I can't use my fence on this face because the fingers will be pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, so it's got to be old-fashioned, hands down. Let's lower that a bit actually. 
I've got no strength in my hand at the moment. I've got a problem with my thumb. There we go. Good. So, I think we're ready to go. Let's see what happens. Good to me. Let's go and check it out. That is right. I'm happy with that. Excellent. By law, the coffin has to be labelled with the resident. And uh, rather than just write the name on, um, I've decided to pyro his name on, and not just his name, but his signature. So I've got Stuart to sign his name, and um, I've laid it out on the tailboard, <laughs> making sure to get it the right way up, groove at the bottom. <laughs> that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it, if it was upside down? And uh, so the first thing to do is to transfer the shape of his signature to the wood. So I've got some carbon paper. eBay is your friend. And that's going to go underneath. And then I'm just going to trace over his name. And this is actually quite difficult to do. Now, pyrography is not something I've done a lot of, um, <laughs> because I think it's an art form. It's, uh, how can I put this politely, vastly overrated? <laughs> Although I've got one friend who does some fairly spectacular work, it has to be said. But um, I've got my little iron, an Aldi special, and uh, we'll see how it comes out. If I mess it up, I'll just have to sand it off and start again. Well, that wasn't quite as traumatic as I feared, actually. And I'll also put his life dates on here when I know what they are. So now it's back to making up. I've, uh, this is ready to go on. So I can fit this and then uh, fit the sides in between the head and footboards. That's it. In. And these have been angled in, slightly down, slightly up, slightly down, slightly up, so that they won't pull out altogether. There we go. And when all that's dry, I shall trim everything off. Give everything a good sand. And that's the, the box itself finished, and it'll be time to turn my attention to the, to the lid. Well, this morning I had the phone call that I was, you know, was expected but unwelcome. Stuart died during the night. So, um, uh, yeah, not great. So I finished doing the pyrography work on the end and uh, I've come to make the top. All the corners have cleaned up nicely. I'm very pleased with the way the corners have come up. No gaps, nice and clean, great. Uh, when I made the bottom, if you remember, I cut the tapers off and glued them back on at the top to make up the right width. It was very efficient and um, Stuart would approve. And uh, it worked great. But I can't do that with this because the top is 40, let's say 43, 45 millimetres wider than the top because it's got to overhang. And uh, the other thing is that I've got a knot at that end. 
So I think I'm going to cut that knot out. It's going to be so close. It's going to be so close. But I think I'm going to get away with it. There are no visible knots on this, on all the sides. Uh, there's some on the inside and the bottom. And, and this one is going to get covered by the, by the lipping. So that it will be totally clear board. So the last thing I want is one solitary knot mucking up my nice sort of clean appearance. So um, I think I'm going to get away with it. It's, it's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. So I've glued on my lipping on one edge and on the top. And I've made this to fit the top with just about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half, sixteenth of an inch or so clearance. So uh, when, when this is all glued, this corner here will be my datum on this corner here. And I'll be able to cut, uh, glue on and cut out for the other side. All right, let's get this on. Right, well, that's located over that corner. Now then, let's have a look at this knot down here. It's very close. Would you look at that? Nearly, but not quite. Bother. And with every pass of the plane, that little knot is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> These days, handles on a coffin or a casket are cosmetic. Um, coffins are not lifted, at least not in this country. I, I suppose it's probably a cultural thing they might do in other countries. But coffins generally wheeled around, so they'll be wheeled out of the hearse, onto a buyer, they'll be wheeled into the crematorium. At very, very little lifting. And what lifting is done will be done by holding underneath. So handles are cosmetic. And in fact, if you see those nice brass handles, <laughs> they're actually plastic, um, usually, they're usually plastic. And uh, we're going to use rope for this, this is natural jute. And so there's going to be um, a pair of loop handles on each side, one there, one behind me, and obviously the same on the other side. So I've done a, I've done a few tests with holes to see what size fits. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what size this is actually, but I know it fits my rope snugly. I don't want a gaping hole. Uh, and rather than tr trying to, normally for a hole that size, I would use a force and a bit, but using a force and a bit of that size freehand, horizontally, yeah, not so keen really. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole, three millimetres, and then I'm going to use an old fashioned brace and bit to give me my hole. And I'm going to drill from, half from the outside and half from the inside so that I get a clean, I don't get any spelching, any, any breakout. If you want to make this as a coffin rather than a casket, then you need to make the shoulders. And you've got two options really. A hard shoulder, in which case you're really going to need a mitre like that. And of course, as with any mitre, a biscuit is your friend. Uh, but if you want the sort of soft shoulder, the curve, then you need to make a whole series of shallow cuts here I'm going about three quarters of the way through of your board, and then you can bend it to follow <laughs> to follow the curve of your coffin. <laughs> I should make him a bit deeper than that if I were you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Because it's tapered, these corners are not 90 degrees, and that adds enormously to the complexity of the joinery, actually. Um, I, didn't, I thought this would be a very straightforward project. It's a box at the end of the day. How hard can it be? Well, it's taken me the best part of three weeks, and, um, OK, I don't work eight hours a day anymore. Uh, I haven't got the stamina these days, quite frankly. 
Um, but it, it, it was a lot more complicated and a lot more work than I anticipated. I don't mind, of course, I'm doing it for my friend. But um, yeah, it, it, it was a bigger job than I anticipated when I said, yes, no problem. So the, the uh, lid, just if you push it that way, because of the taper, it releases, the lid comes off like that and to go on pull it this way and then push from the bottom or pull and it will have pins in as well I've got I've still got to do the pegs but I mean that won't come off now it's gemmed so I wish I hadn't had to do this but I feel very privileged that I have and um, rest well my friend Thank you for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. <laughs>